everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm doing two things. First, I'm going to try to remove this horrible dye job from my doll Rillin's fantasy legs. Then I'll try to dye them again using a different brand of dye. I'll be trying a couple things to remove this. I'll be testing to see what happens when I clean these parts using 91% rubbing alcohol, pure acetone, and Windsor & Newton brush cleaner, which is what I usually use to remove face-ups. I've also got some abrasives. I have sandpaper in a few different grits, but I'll mostly be using 320 and 600 grit. And then a magic eraser cleaning sponge, which is also mildly abrasive. So I'll pull on some gloves to try to protect my hands, then get started with the rubbing alcohol. I don't expect my gloves will last too long, as acetone and rubbing alcohol will both eat through the nitrile gloves after a while but these two chemicals are really drying and I don't want to damage my skin. I start with alcohol on a cotton ball and get to rubbing. I'm actually a bit surprised. The color is definitely lifting. The leg piece is looking lighter already and there's a lot of dye coming off on the cotton ball too. However, it doesn't seem to do much to the sections that took the dye darker than the rest. I'll scrub a bit longer, but it cleaned off all it was going to really early on. You probably noticed the dye I used on these took really badly. It was pretty discouraging, but I also received a ton of really awesome recommendations and information from people who watched the video. So to everyone that took the time to make suggestions, thanks a bunch. I'm sure something here will help. I'd also like to extend a thank you to my supporters on Patreon, who sponsored this project. Hopefully your support will let everyone learn something useful from my big mistakes. Once I'm sure the alcohol isn't doing anything else, it's good to have a look at the other piece. There's a pretty big difference between the two. This is reassuring. It makes me more confident the bad dye can be taken off. Now I'll wash off the leg piece and move on to acetone. I get started with the acetone and, oh wow. I don't know how well this shows up on camera since my camera tends to wash out colors, but this is taking off a ton of dye. It takes off a lot of dye from the blotchy part at the ankle, too. By the way, it's never a good idea to mix chemicals if you're not an experienced chemist. So that's one of the reasons I decided to do this at the sink. This way, I can wash off the pieces before trying something else. It also lets me rinse the piece a few times while using acetone, which can cause resin to become brittle after extended exposure. I actually made a video about the effects of acetone on resin a while back. So if you're curious, you should take a look. These results are really impressive. After just a couple minutes, this leg piece is almost back to its original color. It still has a bit of a blue tint, which actually makes it look lighter than it did originally. But I have another chemical to try. So next up is the brush cleaner. I left one spot on the ankle untouched, and I haven't done anything to the knee joint yet either. So I start with those spots to see what happens, because that way I can see what it does to dye that hasn't been affected by the other cleaners yet. And it's doing... um... well, nothing. The amount of dye it's taking off at the joint is so slight that it barely shows up on the cotton ball, and it doesn't change the color of the joint whatsoever. But you know what? That's actually a really good thing to know because that tells me that I can safely clean face-ups off dyed dolls by using Windsor & Newton brush cleaner, and it won't damage the dye job. So that's really useful information. So I guess the next thing to do is to move on to the abrasives. I start with the magic eraser. You don't have to use these wet, but I cannot stand the way these sponges feel when they're dry. Oh my gosh. Trying to scrub something with a dry magic eraser gives me goosebumps like I was running my fingernails down a chalkboard. I hate it. Melamine sponges are a micro-abrasive, like a super fine sandpaper. That's what makes them so good at cleaning, but it doesn't seem to be enough here because the scrubbing isn't really doing anything. It's not making the dye any lighter, and it's only just barely putting color on the sponge. The only color difference I'm seeing on this doll part is actually just that it's wet now. So the takeaway from this is that, like with the brush cleaner, magic erasers can be used to clean dyed dolls without serious adverse effects. Last of all is sandpaper. This doesn't really need to be tested because I know it works, but it has its own drawbacks too. 
sanding pieces can reduce the level of detail in them. For Rillin's feet, with sculpted ridges and scales, that's not really an option. But I can use them on his calves. This piece is already mostly clean, so I'm just removing the last of the visible dye. For this, I can use 320 and 600 grit sandpaper. It's possible to sand off deeper dye with these fine grits, but it's really time consuming, and my shoulder doesn't allow me to do huge amounts of sanding. Another drawback of sanding is that you can sometimes end up with deep sanding marks. You can see some here, looking a little like dark scratches. These are visible right now because as I sand this piece, the dyed resin dust settles in these grooves. It'll rinse out and be less visible afterward. Fortunately, most of these marks can be dyed over without them being noticeable. Despite the little scratches you can end up with, I decided to go ahead and sand the calves pretty heavily, partly because they didn't take as much dye as the feet and ankles last time. A good heavy, even sanding should make the resin more receptive to this batch of dye, so hopefully they'll turn out better this time. The feet and ankles still have a very blue cast to them when I'm done, but I think it's something the dye will cover. So once all the pieces are as clean as I can get them, it's time for round two. This time, instead of relying on strings to put the resin pieces in the dye bath, I'm going to hang the pieces using wire, so they'll be held fully immersed. The biggest reason for this is because I'll be trying much hotter water, and this should help me avoid getting burned. The bamboo skewers are able to withstand this heat easily. Plus, I already had them handy. As an afterthought, I sort the pieces so each type is on its own skewer. That way, if the smaller ankle pieces take the dye faster, I can remove them while the bigger pieces stay in the dye. Since it came highly recommended, this time I'm using I Dye Poly. And because the pieces still have a blue cast, I'm mixing green and yellow in hopes the yellow will counteract the blue. While the dye pot comes to a boil, I bring a smaller container of water to a boil in the microwave and throw the dye packets into a glass jar. The boiling water will dissolve the packets completely, so I can pour the dye concentrate into the pot when it's ready. The instructions said to use this in a well-ventilated area, so I have my pets outside, lots of fans on in here, and all my windows are open. But I didn't anticipate how bad the smell would be. Fortunately, I keep protective gear on hand for all my projects so I wear gloves and my respirator for the rest of the dye job. The dye mix I have is the ugliest muddy green, and I actually really love it. I hope the parts turn this color. It has a lot of personality, and it's different from what I usually see. I want these parts to be intense, so I dump the entire jar of dye concentrate into the pot. I'll mix it with a bamboo skewer. Then, according to the instructions, I'm supposed to add the color intensifier packet. It says, warning, void inhalation. Good thing I have my respirator on then. I pour in one packet of this for now. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use both since I used two different dyes, or if one is enough since it's a normal sized dye bath. I guess I can always add the second one if it doesn't work. I mean, I already messed this up once, right? Nothing to be scared of this time. Then, once the whole dye bath comes to a bubbly boil, I dunk in the parts. Hopefully this'll... wait, really? All I did was just dip these in and they're already that green? Okay, well, I'll put in all the pieces and hope for the best. Once they're all in, I manage to wait a whole 15 seconds before I'm dying of curiosity, and seriously? 15 seconds! They're already so green! This is so different from the last attempt with the writ dye. But I can also see that the places that were still really blue aren't taking the dye very well, so they'll need a bit longer. 
There's one thing I'm unsure of, though, and that's the way the yellow is kind of clinging to the surface like a film. It makes it hard to tell if these colors are even. These are darkening up really fast, though, and I can tell I'll need to stop sooner than I expected. So I grab a bowl of water to rinse my pieces in. Warm water instead of cold, just in case I need to dunk them back into the dye in a minute. These are looking so good, but I'm really nervous about that yellow, and the blue spots too. At this point, the water is boiling a little too aggressively and it's causing the skewers to move around in the water. I don't want the pieces to touch the sides of the pan, so I think it's time to bail. I pull out all the pieces and drop them in the water. The pot kind of looks like a witch's cauldron now, doesn't it? If this works, it'll definitely feel like magic, especially after that last try. I moved the pieces to the sink for a good rinsing. I rinsed out the jar earlier, and one thing I didn't plan on was that the dye could stain the bottom of my sink, so it suddenly looks super gross. I'll have to bleach it when I'm done. It's kind of a funny story, though. Hopefully my husband thinks it's as funny as I do. I rinse all the pieces in warm water first. Oh my gosh, they're so green! I almost can't believe it! But one thing I didn't count on was that the dye didn't take any faster on the small pieces. Or else the heavy sanding on the calves really did help it take faster there. Or maybe it's because I checked the smaller pieces more often. I don't know, but the ankles and feet are definitely a little lighter than the calves, so they're going back into the boiling dye. Getting them to a better match only takes about 15 seconds. There's still that yellow film on the surface, but I take a hint from my experimenting earlier and decide that maybe the best thing I can do is clean them. So I grab the magic eraser and give these newly dyed pieces a good scrub. And it works wonders. All the yellow film comes off, leaving beautiful parts that are a really rich green. They're surprisingly even, just a few darker places where they still had a heavy blue tint from the failed dye attempt but those will cover easily with blushing later on. Can you believe it? It's a difference of night and day. This was so much easier, faster, and it gave awesome results. It's such a beautiful color. I can hardly believe they're the same parts. My camera isn't doing them justice because the lighting in my kitchen is weird this time of day. So here are a few color corrected photos too. I guess I can safely say that dye attempt number two was a great success. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching! Bye. Man, why didn't I do this to Rune's parts? <laughs>